a very PowerPoint heavy talk that I'm going to say because it's only 10 minutes. Hello, my name is Emily Lutter Bittman. I work for one of four Welsh archaeological trusts in Wales, Gwynedd Archaeological Trust, and Dilladolfai Archaeological Gwynedd um, in Wales. So, Clarissa uh, Kynes, a very warm welcome to Wales. Um, I'll just wait for this to power up. Um, as you will have guessed, I'm possibly not the best fit for presenting as a contractor. We'd hope to, to get a um, a contractor to present this first paper mm -hmm. and it's interesting that we didn't manage to find somebody maybe something for the discussion afterwards so in lieu of having the bona fide article I am sort of imagining myself as a contractor um, an amazing contractor working on an amazing project um, all idealized everything's going to be working brilliantly in this in this example um, and I thought I'd pick up um, uh, on a project, I imagine a project that has a lot of the characteristics that might um, be challenges in terms of big data. So issues of volume, veracity, variability, um, complexity, obviously a very big one for archaeologists. Um, and a big gas pipeline with potentially uh, complex archaeology at various points along the way and a big linear is sort of a good example. So I've picked that as this, a starting point. And I imagine that... Um, Sorry, Slideshow. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm not used to this form. It's not a very, as I said, PowerPoint heavy talk. So I imagined that this amazing archaeological organization would have all the specialist skills that you need to really manage data well. So, particularly digital data in a professional way, so that they'd manage it, manage it from inception to finish, so that it feeds seamlessly into the regional historical environment record, that there are individuals who understand the importance of creating meaningful digital data, um, so that it can really facilitate interpretation and analysis across both time and space, and that there were individuals who were really interested in these challenges involved in the project. Um, I thought I'd pick up from the point where they're about to start the field work. So the desk based work has already been done, but because this is an idealised project, all that's been done perfectly and um, brilliantly. There's been a seamless integration of information into the HER because there was brilliant early dialogue with the HER uh, managers. <laughs> so all the new records were created with the correct reference numbers, um, control terminologies were used where appropriate, so there's no sort of funny. Um, lack of consistency, um, all the formats could be seamlessly and instantly uploaded into the HER and where there was sort of more detail than was appropriate to put into an HER context, there was an agreed strategy for indexing information rather than fully integrating it and because of course the nature of development led archaeology, this is very much a public good, of course there was open data exchange from the early point, there was no hoarding into data and not sharing it. So we're in a, we're in a perfect scenario here. And in, in the spirit of this early dialogue and good dialogue, when the fieldwork team are about to start, they, even though it's been a different contractor, a different contractor's working on this big scheme, they've got their data, they're good to go, but they've also remembered to have that early dialogue with the HER managers. There's more than one HER, by the way, in this big linear scheme. And they, they're just rehearsing some scenarios that might crop up as a result of these, this fieldwork. So the first scenario, you've got a fairly traditional kind of site, you've got more information being thrown up, it's a burnt stone mound. And there's an agreed approach to accession summary information only. Obviously, you've got your agreed fields anyway. And that more detailed site records, photographic records, and context records, and their associated metadata, which has been agreed, will be indexed. Some of the other scenarios. So, this is a site where we don't quite know what the date is. So it's slightly tricky to know what to do. So, the HR, you know, the, they realise it's a provisional um, attribution of reference numbers. There's understanding that it may need to be changed at post X, that's fine. I'm not trying to sort of over control this. And then a, a situation where you've got different dated sites. So again, sort of explicit agreed approach to assign different reference numbers so that once it's seamlessly integrated into HER, researchers okay. that are possibly interested in different types of archaeology can find that stuff without any problem. Different dated archaeology. And another one where, you know, not unlikely in a big linear scheme, this continues over a long period of time. So you're ensuring that there's regular and continued liaison. So that if there's any new information that comes up through other projects, the team is aware of that. 
So everything's good to go. The project runs very smoothly. And because of this, when we reach the post act stage, the, the kinds of problems that often bog down or make analysis difficult are all as much as possible resolved. So this issue of dirty data, I'm sure you come across the term in an ontological context particularly good. So um, this issue of duplicate data, incorrect and accurate, inaccurate data, misleading data, incorrectly punctuated, all that kind of stuff has been minimised because the digital data collection has been planned right from the start. It's built on existing data. So you're not replicating stuff that's already out there. You're auto-populating all the fields that you can from existing data. The methodologies to ensure completeness, validity, consistency, and correctness have all been agreed, and people have been trained to use them and understand why they're important and can do it. There's consistent use of relevant archaeological terms, and there's agreement about this issue about detail um, and what should be indexed and what should be sort of fully included. So this dirty data problem has been massively um, resolved. And I see this as really helping, well, imagine, imagine myself back as, as an amazing contractor, because I don't have lots and lots of dirty data, all my um, specialists can talk to each other more easily, they can access the data more, much more quickly, you can communicate between archaeological contractors, it's, it's streamlined and made that whole process much, much more efficient, even before you're accessing the stuff into the HERs and further afield, obviously, to other data sets. So the key question is, can development level projects really help shape historic environment provision in the future? And you will be unsurprised to know that, as are my amazing contractor, I say yes. Um, you know, as a result of dialogue and collaboration, by optimizing the value of digital information, it really speeds up its reintegration. This is a big blocking point is this lack of data feeding too quickly. It's a problem for everyone. And I think some really clever, efficient use of resources early on could really be an efficient way to um, be part of this virtuous circle so that these specific big data challenges can be um, addressed in, in this context. So it's a kind of, yeah, but that's it. That's my conclusion. <laughs>